Hi guys, Eva here. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited that you're here with us today. I have a very special guest. Her name is Lindsay Marie and I have a cheat sheet of all of the things that I want to say about her before we get started. So you guys get an idea of how amazing this interview is going to be. Lindsay Marie is a mentor for women and she is the CEO of Exquisite Motherhood. I can't wait to talk about that. She's also, she's been a healer, a Reiki teacher, and she's been a raw food advocate for two decades, which is something that I'm just blown away by. I cannot wait to talk to her about this. And she's also the co-founder of a nonprofit that does environmental work. So hi, Lindsay Marie, how are you? I'm so excited to have you. Hello, Ava. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be with you and to get to know your sweet community. Thank you. Thank you so much. So my first question, you know, I'm a raw foodie and so are you. So my first question, I'm always so curious to find out how people get into the lifestyle, like how, when, where did you first learn about raw foods? Well, I, like many of us raw foodists, came upon it when I was in absolute desperation. I was uh, very um sick with a virus that was slowly turning into an autoimmune disorder. And I, I literally got to a point where I didn't know what to do anymore. And I remember having this moment where I was just going deep within and just asking myself, what do I need to do? What do I need to change to be able to heal? And one thing led to another and I started to be introduced to the raw food lifestyle. Um, I was living in Florida at the time, so it was a little bit more widely available than in other places, but this was uh, when I was 20 years old, so it was wow. uh, over 15 years ago, and um, now, you know, I look back and I just realize how synchronistic all these event events were that happened, but essentially I, I became acquainted with some of the leaders in the movement. And I just felt from them such a glow and such a radiance. And I noticed things about their life, like, for example, their relationships. They seem to be really next level and they seem to be just really harmonious and beautiful. And, and um, I noticed in particular, you know, men that were on this lifestyle treating their partners um, who were who were women, you know, in a way that was just really kind and considerate and new for me. And I mm. remember, I want that, like, I want that kind of relationship and connection. And, and I also noticed wealth, I noticed beauty, I noticed certain things that I think all of us are subtly or overtly attracted to and wonder how to get it for ourselves. And so uh, that was kind of an initial more vain kind of feeling that I got from the experience. But when I was actually literally bedridden, like I was so weak, I could, I could barely get up to make myself food. Um, and I was living alone and it got to a point where I was just like, I'm going to give it a try. My friend brought over a wheat grass shot. I thought it was so disgusting, mm. but I took it. I knew it was going to be something that made me feel better. And it was the first time I ever really Injustice is something that I knew was not for taste. It was for the thriving that I wanted and the healing that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so um, from there on, you know, it grew and I would go for like three days or so. And I would just start to notice these insane benefits, um, primarily clarity of mind. Um, and then I would go for longer because I would say, well, if I just get this in three days, what happens if I do it for 10 days straight, mm -hmm. you know, just only eating raw foods and I was just blown away by the results and it got to a point where I would I was so comfortable with the within the raw food lifestyle that when I would try to have something cooked I just felt horrible I would feel so tired and I didn't feel like that the food was giving me energy or life I felt like it was really depleting me and so it just became a commitment for quite some time after that to heal and um and so I did, I healed and I got to a point where I could eat cooked food again and it was no problem. And, and I, I wanted to still experiment, you know, I was in my early twenties and I loved food and I loved restaurants and all kinds of stuff. So I really bounced back and forth over the years until my second pregnancy, um, which I can share about, but 
um, overall, I knew that if anything came up in terms of, you know, feeling poorly in my body or, you know, having too much chaos in my mind, I always knew that it was time to come back to raw foods and just do some kind of reset or reboot. Yeah. And it worked every single time as more of a tool at the beginning. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how it all began. Okay, so much I want to ask you about all of this. So first of all, you were living in Florida, you were in your 20s, you lived alone. But and so someone sort of like introduced you to raw food. And who were okay, first of all, what was the, the illness that you were dealing with? You mentioned a virus. So what was it that you had? Yes, I had Epstein Barr virus. And okay. it was slowly kind of turning into this chronic fatigue syndrome, and some other issues that um, you know, I kind of grew up with, which I, I had multiple crazy diseases when I was younger, really bad eczema and asthma and, and multiple organs removed because of um, issues wow. that I was having. So, so I had a very um, difficult kind of physical reality for a lot of my earlier life. And um, you know, God bless my parents because they were just doing the best they could. And, and a lot of it, um, I think might have just been due to food allergens, to be honest, and just not being able to really have the sensitivity and my own awareness to know like, oh, I'm eating all this peanut butter and I think I'm allergic to it. It was just yeah. such a norm and, and I was so immersed in it that I didn't have the space to really step back and say, you know, is it from what I'm eating that's causing all these problems? And, and now I see that as, as such a clear connection. So uh, I feel super blessed to, to be where I'm at now with it. But yeah, yeah so those were what I was, was um, dealing with at that time in, in my early 20s. Okay, okay. And so uh, did you ever go to Hippocrates since you were in Florida? Or did you know about it? Because when you mentioned wheatgrass, I'm like, I think Hippocrates. <laughs> I knew of him and I also knew of Gabriel Cousins and Gabriel Cousins was the first um, raw food author that I that I ever found out about but I actually had just gotten back from Hawaii when I got sick and um, and so I was familiar with David Wolf and with a few of the other raw foodists more on the islands mm -hmm. and um, I, I was never really drawn to go to Hippocrates because I always felt like oh I always had this feeling like that was just if you have cancer or if you have, and yeah. I, for some reason I was kind of in denial about how serious my issue was. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of am always the kind of person that wants to test things out myself and, and really have the time and the space to explore and kind of experiment with my life to really find out what works best for me. And so I didn't really want to be on anyone else's protocol. I wanted to really listen to my body mm -hmm. and really be in tune with it. And so I didn't go there. Uh, but I did watch quite a few of his videos and, and get into sprouting at a certain point. And I believed in the power of wheatgrass because of a lot of his work around that. Yeah, yeah. I never did get into the wheatgrass. It was always so, I just could not do it. Um, and then, so then you got better and then you decided, then you moved to Hawaii. Because let me tell you, first of all, the, the, the birds singing in the background <laughs> is just so beautiful and so peaceful. And your energy is so peaceful and so beautiful. So... Thank you. Thank you for letting the birdies sing and not closing the windows. That's Thank beautiful. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yes, you. thank them. They're, they're phenomenal. I'm often like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I, I actually didn't move to Hawaii for quite some time after Florida. I went to graduate school in Colorado and okay. I continued my raw food dance through the winters of Colorado snowstorms and and I somehow wow. was able to still you know dance back and forth but um like I said it wasn't until my second pregnancy I was living on the islands so that's where I had all uh, three of my children um that I realized the power of just raw fresh fruits and vegetables yeah Yes, yes, yes. And so you mentioned right away, like the fog, the mental fog lifted, you started feeling better, like how long did it take for you to really start thriving? And what were some of the more noticeable changes that you noticed right away? So I would say that for quite some time, from my 20s to 30s, I had this 
three day window where it was, if I was eating cooked food and I wanted to get the clarity that I would get from eating raw foods, I just needed to do it for three days. And I would just be like so crisp and so clear. And, you know, the words would come quickly and, and I would feel peace of mind and it would feel like fear would leave my system. It was amazing. And I have a lot of uh, training in meditation. That's my, my background is as a contemplative psychotherapist. And so I've spent tons of time with my mind and kind of understanding how the mind operates. And so I'm very sensitive to how food affects it. And mm. really the raw food transition, when I would do it a hundred percent too, even if it, it would be like a little bit of, you know, some cooked steamed potato or whatever, it would, it would impact it. It would shift it. And so I was always so interested in what, what diet or lifestyle is going to provide the most mental clarity and the greatest happiness, because I know that I'm going to be able to be of greatest service to life when I feel good. Mm. And that's like, is to serve and so I think that's the biggest thing that I noticed was just even after three days I felt better and I just felt like I was more aligned with my purpose and I knew even if I didn't have the words to identify what my purpose was I knew that I was walking in that direction and I just felt aligned and I felt connected to spirit and I felt um, you know, just a lack of the drama it, it was I don't want to say that it takes care of everything but it takes care of a lot for me personally. And so I imagine it would be this, the same for others, but everybody has their own path and they have their own sensitivities and feelings and needs. And so I'm totally respectful of that. Um, and at the same time, I love to share my journey and my experience with you know, what works for me so, so well every time, so consistently. Mm, I love that. But when you talk about cooked food, I don't class all cooked food the same. Like, are we talking like what what cooked food are, were you eating or are you eating? Because uh, to me, steamed vegetables or potatoes is not the same as like Chinese takeout. I don't know, right. or French fries or something. So like when you're talking cooked food, when you were introduced to the cooked food, what cooked foods were you were you just like swinging wildly from raw food to eating out burgers or like what was the what was the uh, per, what were the parameters there? Mm -hmm. So I would say way back in the day, I was not eating enough fruit. When I went on the raw foods lifestyle, it was it was um, something that I still was afraid of. I, I really believed that fruit caused cancer and candida and lots of problems, and mm -hmm. and I didn't have quite a proper understanding of you know, um, fat to carb ratios in order to feel good and, and really how to fuel my body in the most optimal way. It was just all an experiment. And so I would eat raw foods and then I would get to a point where I just felt, I felt hungry and I would eat Indian food. It would always be vegan or vegetarian, but I would eat, um, you know, heavier just carbs, like cooked starches and rice and vegetables and all of that. Yeah. And I recognized that that was heavily laden with oils and all kinds of not ideal stuff. And that's why it didn't feel good at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but even if I had at certain points, just some steamed potatoes and squash and things like that, I still would even be sensitive and notice some, some impacts of that. And that probably just had to do with the state of my bodily condition at that time. Mm -hmm. And now I, I actually for um, quite some time now have just completely eliminated um, anything that's heat processed other than just dehydrated things. I, mm -hmm. I really love making dehydrated goods occasionally, um, but where I live and with what I have access to, it's, it's so fresh and so abundant and so delicious that I just feel like if I eat as much as I can raw foods, by the end of the day, I, I don't have any desire for anything cooked, even um, to integrate, uh, you know, things within within the high raw. It, it doesn't feel like a need of mine right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I do occasionally love to, you know, like slightly dehydrate my bananas or make okra crackers. That's my newest favorite thing is just to mm -hmm. blend okra and then to dehydrate it. And it, it almost acts like flax seeds because yeah. it's just um, yeah. but it doesn't have the any overt in it if for people who are sensitive to that um 
you know, so there are lots of things that I do to, to feel like I'm nourished in terms of the heat. I eat lots of chili. I do like onion. I might not supposed to be, you know, (laughs) an advocate of that, but, um, I, I do enjoy spice a little bit mm-hmm. here and there. And um, overall, I would say that, yeah, I just don't feel like I have a need for anything that's heat processed or cooked mm-hmm. or steamed or anything at this point. And I just feel so good. And I feel like every day I'm feeling better and better and stronger mm-hmm. and healthier and happier. And my life is getting more magical and more problem free. And it's just, it just feels like that's my greatest incentive is seeing the way that my life is unfolding and, and really just feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm going the right way and it's all working out good. I love it. I love it. And you sound like a raw chef because I never thought of making okra crackers, first of all. So now I can tell that you're very creative in the kitchen. So that just blows my mind away because I'm not. So can you share a little bit like what you would eat in a day? I know you talked a little bit about it, but like, what would you, what would a typical day look like for you where you live? Yeah. So where I live, I'm going to give my ideal day because it, it changes every day depending on what's available. Yeah. And in my family, we're really big on, um, you know, just having access to whatever is ripe and available mm-hmm. and, um, in abundance at each season. So I would say my absolute most ideal day would be to wake up in the morning to have a um, a couple of juices. I really enjoy ifu juice, which is also known as opo or a calabash mm. or a green, green squash. Okay. Um, you can find them in international markets very easily. And they're, um, they're a fruit because they're a squash, but they're one of my favorite things to grow and to, to juice and they are so nutritious and they are low glycemic. So, it, and it's very, very hydrating and it actually mm. has a pretty high amount of calcium in it as far as fruits go. And so um, I, I personally love to have juices of that in the morning and it's super mild and um, sometimes a, a green juice as well. That's yeah. kind of my main supplementation is just having a really rich green juice of yeah. sunflower sprouts and dandelion greens and parsley and cilantro and sometimes nettle and moringa and just whatever really powerful herbs I can get yeah. get in I don't put lemon or lime in it that's way too acidic for me I just do a straight up green juice and sometimes I put celery in it to make it more salty and more flavorful but other times I just take it as if it's a shot just a health shot and um and then for lunch I usually have a lot of fruit okay and and, um lately I've been having a lot of the best mangoes I've ever had in my life they're so of course (laughs) Uh, we have a lot of amazing varieties of bananas here everything from blue ice cream bananas to uh Thai bananas to apple bananas and I would say my favorite meal ever would be to combine bananas with these two other fruits one is called peanut butter fruit wow. and it's a little red um fruit about the size of a quarter and it is literally the texture and the flavor of peanut butter and it's so delicious and I like I mentioned earlier I think I'm allergic to peanut butter it's a pretty mm-hmm. obvious at this point so when I can eat peanut butter fruit it's like a blessed day and um and then we also have this blackberry jam fruit which tastes exactly like blackberry jam and so to mix those wow. two fruits with bananas and just have a big bowl and um you know sometimes even make like a banana um milk just with bananas and water blended and have it be like a cereal kind of thing that I have midday I love that mm-hmm. and I usually have an afternoon snack and sometimes I like to do less sweet for that and I would do like, um, if I did do okra bread, I would put some bell peppers on it and maybe some tomato and eat some chili with it and maybe some lacinato kale or, or you know, some greens. I, I like to eat very simply. I could just eat a head of lacinato kale with a few tomatoes. It, mm-hmm. It's very good, but I also like to make complex things too at times, but for the most mm-hmm. part, it's really simple. And, um, and then in the evening, I, I eat quite a bit of zucchini usually. Mm. 
I start my meal with a bunch of fruit just to make sure that I'm getting enough calories, sometimes even some juice, some more juices if I have some leftover mm -hmm. from the day. Um, just as much sweet as I want until I'm done with it. And then I switch over to savory and have mm -hmm. zucchini and, and um, all kinds of greens, kale and lettuce and anything that we have growing in our garden. And it sounds delicious. It sounds yeah. delicious. Uh, but we, people don't know that you live in Hawaii. So they're wondering where does she live? So the reason she's eating all those fruits, people, is because she lives in Hawaii. <laughs> and it's my hope that these fruits get spread to everybody because I mean there was a day about 10 years ago when my husband and I were joking about um, dragon fruit and how we felt like it was the new superfood and it needed to be in commercial stores and at that time you mentioned dragon fruit nobody knew about it and yeah, now you yeah. can find it at Walmart and Safeway yeah. all over the mainland and yeah. it's just incredible so there is hope that more of these beautiful fruits can be spreading around so that everybody can have the variety that we get blessed with here yeah. and the international markets are such a great resource for people yeah. who don't live in tropical places wherever I've lived on the mainland uh, during certain periods on my raw food journey I have really utilized a lot of the international markets and mm -hmm. have always found really special fruits and really delicious rare things mm -hmm. and so I really encourage that for people who are like I'm so bored <laughs> yeah 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 I know I feel for people that can only get apples and oranges in the winter you're like oh that's heartbreaking I know yeah. I live in San Diego so I do I am blessed with a lot of great local fruit too mm -hmm. winter's a little bit more boring but we still get persimmons and we just yeah it's it's good it's it's really good so that's that's huge I do feel for people that don't have access to that because it does make it a little bit harder and you have to be more resourceful but it sounds like you're super resourceful because are you growing your food too and first of all what kind of juicer do you have I have uh, the newest Nama juicer that mm -hmm. uh, I, I got through uh, Fully Raw Christina who's a dear sister of mine and and um, we use it every day. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's one of the best juices I've ever had. And it's just okay. this beautiful white juicer and it's, mm -hmm. you know, but I, you can do amazing juices with a very low end cold press juicer or even a centrifugal juicer. But, um, you know, I've just gotten to a point where it's, it's such a key part of our day. And, mm -hmm. and I love able to make green juices for my whole family and for friends even when they come over and so it's really good to have have yeah. something that can stand up to what it yeah. needs to be yeah. used for yeah and and you also grow your own food so we have gone through periods where we've we've grown the majority of our own food and uh we had an orchard on maui um that we recently sold and are transitioning into some other work um, on the island so we are working towards that again it's amazing yeah. for all of my pregnancies and um, after the children were born I've, I've been able to you know really my husband and I both have been able to create a paradise for them to be able wow. to be around and picking fruit off of the raspberry bushes and kale from the plants and it's it's just been phenomenal to have that connection and and even if it's just a little garden in the backyard or, or something just for kids to be able to have that relationship of oh I can get my food from the earth and to develop that relationship I think is so so powerful for the generations that are coming in right now yes I love it and and I now that you've spoken about your children and a little bit about pregnancy can you share with us a little bit more about that because you are the CEO of a company geared toward women and so I'm really curious when I saw your bio I'm like okay what is that what what, what is she teaching so can you share with us what that's all about yes yeah absolutely thank you for asking um, exquisite motherhood is something that's been coming for a long time and transforming over the years. And we just recently had a makeover of our website and of our offerings. Um, but essentially, it's a an online kind of luxury destination for women who are interested in um, really preparing themselves to have their most fulfilling pregnancy and childbirthing and motherhood journeys. Uh, I also do 
uh, workshops and all kinds of things with just women who aren't interested in motherhood, but for the most part, I specialize with mothers. Um, and that's due to my own experiences with having several um, extremely joyful pregnancy and birthing experiences and just wanting to be able to share with women what I found to work for me so that we can really rewrite this story that we all have so deeply ingrained in us that you know being pregnant and carrying a child and giving birth is heavy and painful and and mm -hmm. everything that, that we think it is from the Hollywood imagery that we're you know really having all around us since mm -hmm. the when we come into this world so it's it's an attempt to really offer an alternative for women that deep down know that there is one and I, I think that it's easy to kind of sense that um, you know we're here not to be in pain that we really are here to thrive and enjoy life and, and be um, you know feel like we're blessed to be here and so it's beautiful when mothers can be in that perspective and they can be raising their children from that place. Mm -hmm. that I resonate with all of what you're sharing because yes when I was pregnant I would almost have to tell people please do not tell me your your birth story if it's not one that's positive and joyful people could not wait to share the negative stuff or the hospital birth and how horrible it had been and and then Hollywood represents it as <laughs> the screaming a lot of that and I was I took a course called hypnobirthing and it was the opposite of all of that it was all about, you know, just just what you're describing. So can you can you share with us? Because I'm vibing so high with this. I love it. This is a great subject. Can you share with us your own pregnancies and how they were, and just blow people's minds away with what's possible? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Um, my first pregnancy and childbirth was, um, I was completely on a conventional diet. I thought I was doing it in the healthiest way possible, sourcing it from local sources and getting grass fed this and that and, and local, you know, whatever it may have been. Um, and I had my birth and it was an amazing birth. And I, I cherish it so much because it, it, it made me from a maiden into a mother and it was an incredible transformation. And mm -hmm my husband and I had an incredible experience with it. Um, but it was intense. It was intense. And it, it was, I would say it was, it was quite traumatic. And, um, but not at the same time, it, it wasn't traumatic compared to most people. But it was a lot for my body. And it, and it took me time to recover. And, and um, I went into my second pregnancy on the same lifestyle. Um, you know, still eating conventionally. And after a few months into my pregnancy, I remember having this, this vision, this dream of, um, you know, just the raw foods, really, I, I had this, this feeling of just a quality of life that I missed, and that I knew that I'd experienced before, and I wanted it back. And I, I didn't feel good. I, I was eating all these fresh vegetables and we were spending so much time each day cooking these incredible meals with all these local products and really thinking that we were doing the best thing. And overall, I just, I didn't feel good. I just didn't feel good in my body. I didn't feel good in my mind. I felt kind of depressed. Mm. I just felt disconnected. And, you know, I, I still felt overall like everything was okay and there weren't any problems with with me beyond just my own psychosomatic kind of, you know, issues that I was dealing with, but I still knew deep down that I could feel better. And so I kept bringing up this raw foods thing to my partner because I just kept feeling it. I was like, I, I know I can feel better. I think I need to get back into this raw foods thing. And, mm -hmm. and he was always curious about it. And almost he's so supportive. He's one of the most supportive people I've ever met in my life, but when it came to this topic and how much of foodies we were, he would always be, he would always cite this Harvard, um, this article from Harvard that was about how we've evolved with 
uh, cooking our food and with fire. And, and I would say, I know I, I believe them at Harvard, but I still, I have my own anecdotal experience with this raw food journey. And I just think that we should, we should try it together and we should see how we feel and let's just try it for a few days. Mm-hmm. And so we did. And we both started doing, just being avid researchers and just really wanted to figure out how to do it the right way, obviously, because I was pregnant and uh, we, there was no room for messing around or experimenting. We had to get it right from the beginning. So we made sure that we had all of our pieces in place and, and we just felt better and better every day. And after a few days, we're like, we feel great. Let's keep going. Everything's still going well. We have no problems. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And we went all the way, um, you know, through the pregnancy uh, into the childbirth following an 100% raw food lifestyle and every single day got better and better and every wow. single day I felt more and more relaxed and more aligned and like the fear around giving birth and the intensity of that experience was just dissolving and I, I was even feeling really in control and like I was able to kind of do a little bit of the hypnobirthing work on myself and kind of recreate what I wanted my birth to be like. And I would wake up every day and I would say, what do I need to do today and feel today and think today and eat today in order to have my most fulfilling childbirth ever. And, and then I would follow the answers that would come through me through the day. And every day just was a miracle and feeling, you know, more and more aligned with who I wanted to be always. And when the moment of birth came, it it was almost like, you know, the the months prior to that was really just a rehearsal for this event, just preparing me and just setting such a beautiful context and stage for the most exquisite birth that I could have ever imagined. What can you describe what an exquisite birth looks like or feels <laughs> like, or what is that for people that haven't had that? that sort of experience because I know I hear it a lot people have not had good experiences and it breaks my heart so what does that look like it breaks my heart too and and I just want to preface this with saying that you know so much of my movement um, has been with such intention and such sensitivity around the subject that a lot of women don't have this experience Mm. and I have said so many prayers that that can change and that this can change and that we can change this now mm-hmm. and um and i've seen it in my own experience i've i've had a hard birth and i've had an exquisite birth and what i mean by exquisite birth i'll go into right now which is for my second birth um when the moments of labor came uh, it was as if I wasn't even in labor. It was, I was having these so-called contractions, but to me, they felt like expansions. And I didn't even like using that word contractions because I felt like I was expanding. Mm-hmm. And it got to a point where I literally, um, you know, I was just completely merged with the moment and I, I wasn't in pain. I It was a completely easeful and effortless birth. And my daughter came out in her amniotic sac with it still intact and my body I didn't push I kept hearing this guidance that just kept saying let it happen let it happen let it happen Mm -hmm. and my body literally ejected her and I later found out that there was that there actually is the fetal ejection reflex which is a, a designed part of the female body and if you're giving birth in an undisturbed way, your body is able to involuntarily eject the baby when it's the right time. Mm-hmm. This was my experience. And I I literally laughed as she was coming out. And my husband jokes and says he's still waiting for the birth to happen because it just wasn't birth as he knew it or as yeah. we know it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I went on years later to have a very similar experience with my, with my third child as well. Um, eating primarily raw foods, especially, um, you know, toward the end, Mm -hmm. staying as hydrated as possible Mm -hmm. and uh, really adhering to what I felt was what contributed to that, um, for a, in a large degree. Mm, I love it. So what, how can women have what you had? Like, how are you able to 
teach women? What is that? What your company does, or like how? What would it, what advice would you give to women who are also looking to have an exquisite child childbirth and pregnancy? Well, thank you for asking that, and I'm I'm not necessarily in a place to give recommendations or advice or or um, you know supplementation to anyone's regimen, but I do have my own experience, and I love to share it. I love mm -hmm. to share the journey, and I love to share what has worked for me. And that's what exquisite motherhood is all about is really, uh, there are three main avenues um, that, that I call pillars or teachings that are ways that we, you know, develop healthier um, habits with incorporating more fresh raw foods if women want to learn how to do that, um, develop relationships with, you know, their family and their loved ones and humanity and the earth and um, really get to understand their minds and, and uh, how to connect, feel connected and like we have an alive relationship with life. And so um, it's, a, it's a beautiful holistic approach um, of a lot of different integrative therapies that uh, enables us women to feel, feel healed and feel whole and feel like we're really making the decisions that we want to, to have our most fulfilling life and to if we are choosing to create children or even if we're creating businesses or projects or all kinds of things to be able to feel like we're doing it from this most authentic and genuine and highest integrity and aligned place mm -hmm. i love that and so you have you have three children and the I first do. one was conventional <laughs> still <laughs> a great birth but Com com let's call it conventional yeah. and then the other two were raw and high raw pregnancies and you definitely noticed a pretty big significant difference would you say absolutely I mean I it's amazing too because I was speaking to my first child the, first of all all three of them are incredible they are stunning beings they're so amazing so I don't think my conventional lifestyle impacted <laughs> no. the that my first was. no but I was sharing with him the other day about my birth because he actually was able to witness this the following two birds and mm -hmm. he has an amazing connection with his sisters because of that and it, it was incredible to be able to have him involved in that process but when I shared with him about his birth and I, sh I was being honest and I was saying, yeah, and then I, I didn't really feel that good. And I threw up yeah. <laughs> like, why, you know, like he, it was so hard for him to understand yeah. why it was different than the other ones that he had seen where I was just walking around and there, it was like, no one even knew I was in labor, you yeah. know, like it was just such a contrast for him. And, and I was like, well, you know, a lot of reasons I was, I was younger and I, I didn't know as much about myself and I, I don't think I was eating the right foods and yeah. I I ate some bread right when I went into labor and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were things that I, I wasn't doing that today are such a big no yeah and but so I I don't I'm not quite sure if that answered your question but yeah. um, most most of all it's just it was a stark contrast it was mm -hmm. such a big mm -hmm. contrast that by the time as soon as my baby came out after my second pregnancy, I was, I was in tears. I was in awe. And I really believed that this was the, these were the foods that I needed to be eating in order to have my best life, because I had firsthand witness of this was the way that I could have my best birth. And now I want to be the best mother I can be. And so what do I need to do and eat? And, you know, motherhood is almost like an extreme sport in a lot of ways. And so yeah. I feel like my body needs to be in good shape. I need to have energy if I want to be the mother that I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel so blessed that I now know what to nourish myself with to be able to be able, uh, you know, to be able to provide um, the me that I want to, to my family. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so what are other... Uh, practices that you do follow besides the raw food because it sounds like you're very holistic you don't just it's not just about the food so what other in my opinion it's not just all about the food either there's just so many other components to good health and wellness and and a good life so what are some of the other practices that you that you do do yeah well it varies every day but I do have a practice of waking up quite early I like my alone time 
And so uh, I would say ever since, you know, even before I had kids, I would, I would wake up between four and six every day to just have some meditation wow. time, journaling time, <laughs> and to, to really set my intentions for the day and, and to really have my, my sacred time where I can really feel like I'm creating the life and the day that, that I want to um, in terms of just my mental space. And I, I'm a, a big fan of meditation, any kind of meditation. Um, I have been uh, a Reiki practitioner and master for quite some time. And that's been a huge part of my journey. And I used to practice it every day, but now it's just kind of become me and my life. And so it's not as much a practice anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then exercise and of course beautiful relationships and music music and dance is a huge part of our family. Um, you know we love to celebrate and we love to dance together and make music together and and to grow food and be on the earth when we can and uh, really as much as possible. You know soak up the sun and and um, spend time really supplementing from these natural sources that are so available and holistic and, and mm. such a blessing. I love it. I love hearing you talk about your life because it sounds beautiful and so peaceful and it just amazing. <laughs> so thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes. Um, let me ask you just real quick one more thing, because I know at the beginning I said you do environmental work. So what's that about? What and you're like a co-owner uh, or what? Sorry, explain that a little bit. What is what are you doing with the environment? That's that's fine. I'm so happy you brought this piece in because it 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 really feels so big to me. Um, I feel like anyone that is in this movement is aware of the environmental impact of uh, the decisions that we make on a dietary scale and how they really do contribute um, to creating or or destroying you know the world that we really want to have and so the environmental piece has always been a really big piece in my heart and um, I was into it long before I got into health um, as a matter of fact I at one point was um, very into environmental studies and that was my, my undergraduate um, major for quite some time. And I was conducting a trash pickup. And as I was doing this trash cleanup, somebody drove by and threw a bag of McDonald's out the window. Oh. And I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, like I, you, I could have felt offended, but I really felt more heartbroken than anything. And I realized that the, the subject of environmental you know pollution and and whatever's happening on the planet is not so much about the environment and how we're treating it it's really about ourselves and how we understand ourselves and each other and how we relate to each other and how we care for each other and for ourselves mm -hmm. and so it really kind of steered me in a direction towards psychology and more humanitarian efforts for quite some time um, tr trying to learn how to understand the mind and how the mind works and then uh, eventually it's brought me full circle back into the environmental realm. Um, my husband and I just recently co-founded a nonprofit organization, which is called Inua Conservation Organization. And it's um, across all of the islands and it integrates um, conservation work, which we've done for, for quite some time with uh, a little bit of, of the psychology and the hermitage and retreat type work um, it's a beautiful blend of, of both of those together um, and I think that just for for all of us especially for us parents we we really see the significance of um, really connecting with with the earth and with nature and really trying to listen to it and understand how we can do our piece to really create a beautiful world for our children and for the generations to come because that's what we're leaving behind to them and mm -hmm. it's not just for us to use up and then leave and say okay see ya it's like we have loved ones and even just loved humanity that we're leaving this earth behind too so I love to every day try to think about those things and integrate that in to to our daily living so that we know that we're contributing beneficially in some way and this project has been a huge um you know culmination in that regard yes 
Yes, it sounds beautiful and Thank wonderful. You. And I'm so glad you're doing that also as a family. It sounds like you and your husband. So you guys are on the same page. That's really nice. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing everything. I feel like I could, I don't know, go so many directions, ask you so many more questions, but mm -hmm. maybe I can have you back and we can go a little deeper on some, on maybe the childbirth aspect or the pregnancy or just, this has been a great introduction of you. And maybe we can come back and talk a little bit more about certain things a little more deep. Let's see, you know. That could be something. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, it's been such an honor to be with you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for being here with us today. I hope you have enjoyed your time with us. It's been amazing. I have learned so much. I hope you have too. Please leave your comment down below. I will uh, link all of um, her information so you guys can reach to her if you need to. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.